The following audio is a translation to the English language from a volunteer. The one who speaks is your servant, Dr. Javier Palacio Celorio, minister or Roy of the Kehila, the congregation Gozo y Paz, Joy and Peace, Hanaba Shalom, headquartered from the city of Tehuacan in Puebla, Mexico. We invite you, your family, and friends to visit us online at www.joyandpeace.us. There you'll find study materials that you can download, copy, and give away for free. Here at our Kehila, our congregation, we do not do business with the word of our Elohim, our Creator. Do it and do it quickly because time is running out. This teaching is titled, The Misinterpretation of the Torah. In this study, we will learn very important information that will help you grow spiritually and will also help you to increase in wisdom in Chokmah, as it is pronounced in Hebrew. Only open your heart and humble yourself before our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, and He will increase your emunah, your faith, in the same way that He has done for those who truly love and follow Him. For many years now, it has been a tradition in Christianity and universally understood among the 30,000 plus Christian denominations around the world that the Torah, or the law, that Moshe, that Moses, received from our Heavenly Father is no longer in effect that it has been abolished, destroyed, that it is no longer a requirement for believers, making the Torah null and void in the lives of hundreds of millions of people worldwide. But is this idea of universal salvation really true? Does the Bible support this idea as a fact? Or are there parts of the Bible which find it impossible for this idea to be reality? One thing is for sure, our salvation is not based upon popularity or fashion or the major vote. If one could simply walk through a door, believe in the Savior, and be saved, then Matthew chapter 7 verse 14 would not say, For narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way, which leads to eternal life, and there are few who find it. Join us for the next hour or so, and I'm going to go over several passages, pasuks, in the Bible, and illustrate how traditional Christianity has interpreted and understood certain passages of the Bible. And then I'm going to explain the correct message that our eternal creator was delivering to us on behalf of the prophets through the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Today, the Ruach HaKodesh, or Holy Spirit, will demonstrate for you with the same Bible, the same Tanakh, the same Bible that you hold in your hands, that the Holy Torah, or the law, the instructions of truth, that was given to Moshe, to Moses, on Mount Sinai, is in fact very much alive today, and has been from the moment our Heavenly Father wrote it with His own finger over 3,000 years ago. Go ahead and open up your Bible to the book of Romans, on chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. Romans chapter 6, verses 14 and 15 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Certainly not. How does traditional Christianity interpret and understand Romans chapter 6 verses 14 and 15? They say, You see, we are no longer under the law of Moses, the Torah. Now, we are under grace. What is the divine explanation, the true message of these verses, according to the voice of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit? Let's go to Romans chapter 7 verse 25. Romans chapter 7 verse 25. Here the Bible says, I thank Elohim, I thank God, through Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the Torah, or the law, of Elohim, but with the flesh, the law of sin. As you can see, there are in fact two interpretations of the word law in the modern Bible. One interpretation of the word law refers to the law of sin and death. And the other interpretation of the word law refers to the Holy Torah. What Rav Shaul, Paul, was saying is that he was born again and was no longer under the law of sin and death, but that he was now under the Holy Torah and the grace of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Sadly, these verses are among the most misunderstood verses in the entire Bible. It's easy to see how someone could get confused about certain verses, especially when an important word can have entirely different meanings. Another example of this is right there in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 2. Here, the Bible reads, For the Torah, or the law, 
of the Spirit of Life in Mashiach Yahshua has made me free from the law of sin and death. Again, as you can see, there are two interpretations of the word law in the Bible. Now, go ahead and note these scriptures down. They will help you to grow spiritually. If you don't have a pen and a paper handy, for your convenience, this audio can be downloaded completely free of charge at www.joyandpeace.us. As you can see, my friends, thanks to our Heavenly Father, our Abacadosh, there won't be any more confusion about these verses. Now, your Bible, your Tanakh, will become crystal clear for you and you will be able to understand what you are reading when you sit down to read your Bible, your Tanakh. Rav Shaul, or Paul, never said that we were no longer under the Torah and that now we were under grace. This cannot be because men have always found grace from our Creator, as I mentioned in the study called the Torah. Adam, Noah, Noach, Abraham, Abraham, Moshe, Moses, etc. all found grace hundreds of years before Yeshua HaMashiach was born. What Rav Shaul was saying was that anyone who was born again stopped living under the law of sin and death and that they were now under the Holy Torah thanks to the grace of our Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMashiach. Let's go to another passage that has been very badly misunderstood by tradition. Go ahead and turn to Romans chapter 10 verse 4. Romans chapter 10 verse 4. Here the Bible reads, For Mashiach the Messiah is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. How does modern Christianity interpret and understand this verse? They say, you see, Christ is the end of the law of Moses, the Torah, to everyone who believes. Therefore, they say, we are no longer required to abide by the law, by the Torah. What is the divine explanation of this verse? The true message, according to the voice of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, that was heard by the holy prophets. Here, the word law does refer to the holy Torah. The word end, in this case, is referring to the objective or the end result of the Torah. Remember, Yahshua HaMashiach kept the Torah. This is how he remained perfect throughout his life, to become the perfect sacrifice for our transgressions. He is, in fact, the end result of the Torah. He kept the holy Torah to the letter. He became the living Torah. In the book of Psalms, on chapter 19, verse 7, the Bible says, The Torah or law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. I'll repeat that again. In Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7, the Bible says, The Torah or law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Now, let's just say, let's pretend the Christian interpretation of this verse was true. And I went out one night and robbed a person, pardon my expression, and killed another person, only to end up getting caught by the police a short time later and arrested. And let's just say, after doing these horrible things, I went up in front of the judge, and the judge says, well, on behalf of the state of such and such, I sentence you to life in prison without the possibility of parole. But, since you're a fellow Christian, these laws have been abolished and they are done away with. They don't apply to you anymore. Therefore, on behalf of the state of such and such, you are free to go. Bailiff, uncuff this man. Now, does this make any sense to anyone? Any sense at all? Of course not. Why would it? But that is exactly what is happening to hundreds of millions of people that are taught to believe that the Torah is no longer in effect. Just think, would this type of activity ever be allowed in our court system in the United States? Of course not, right? Not in a million years. Then what makes us think it's allowed in heaven? The fact is, it's not. Not in a billion years, I'm pretty sure of it. The truth is, the Holy Torah, the Law of Moses, is perfect according to what we just read in the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Perfection does not need to be changed, altered, or improved upon in any way, shape, or form. In fact, the New Oxford Dictionary defines the word perfect as, I quote, 
having all the required or desirable elements, qualities, or characteristics, as good as it is possible to be, free from any flaw or defect in condition or quality, faultless, precisely accurate, exact. Let's go to another set of passages that have also been very badly misunderstood by the traditions of men. Go ahead and turn your Bible to the book of Colossians. In Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. Here the Bible reads, And you, being dead in your trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. How does modern Christianity interpret and understand these verses? They say, Jesus Christ nailed the law, the Torah, the law of Moses, to the cross, in effect abolishing the Torah, the law, making the requirements null and void. And now, thanks to the grace of the Lord, all we have to do is believe in His name and you shall be saved. What is the true explanation of these verses? The divine message according to the voice of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, that was heard by the prophets. He did not nail the Holy Torah, His commandments, to the cross. I repeat, He did not nail the Holy Torah, His commandments, to the cross. This would be impossible. What He nailed was our debts, our trespasses, to the Holy Torah that were against us. How can the Holy Torah be against us? The Holy Torah is a blueprint, if you will, a guide to our daily lives. Yeshua HaMashiach used the Holy Torah in order to remain free from sin until his final moments. Modern Christianity thinks that the Holy Torah was nailed to the cross and as a result we are now under grace. But as we have learned, there has always been grace. Grace has always existed for humanity ever since the first man, Adam. What happened was that all of the damage that was done to the Holy Torah and all the damage that continues to this day was already prophesied in the book of Isaiah from the prophet Isaiah on chapter 5 verse 20 where it says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Here, on the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 20, the word sweet is referring to the Holy Torah. How can we prove this? If you turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 119, in the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 103, it reads, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Psalms, chapter 119, is a tremendous blessing in the lives of true followers of Yeshua HaMashiach. My advice to you is that you read Psalms chapter 119 as soon as possible. Even if you have read it before, read it again and behold the difference it can make now that you understand that there are two interpretations of the word law in your Bible. When we go back to the book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 24, in the book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 24, we can easily see why traditions of man have placed evil for good and good for evil. When the Bible says, Because they have rejected the Torah of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. I repeat that again. Because they have rejected the Holy Torah, the Torah, the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. You see how serious the situation is, folks? We must not allow it to be deceived by the laws of man, by the traditions of man. We must only guide ourselves by what is written in the Tanakh, in the Bible, in the Holy Torah, in the Brit Hadashah. For the next set of verses, let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Here, the Bible reads, for he himself is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments, containing ordinances, as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. How does Christian tradition explain and understand these verses? 
they say, Christ abolished the law, the Torah, in order to introduce us to grace. But what is a true explanation of these verses? The divine message according to the voice of the Ruach HaKodesh that was heard by the prophets. What our Lord Yahshua HaMashiach came to destroy was the enmity in the laws and ordinances that the ruling corrupted Jewish priests at that time had added, had added to the Torah. They added man-made laws on top of the Torah. They undermined what had already been established on Mount Sinai with Moshe, with Moses. There was no need to alter or change the Torah in any way. The Holy Torah was already perfect. It didn't need to be changed or altered in any way. But sadly, this is exactly what they had done. And this is why Yahshua HaMashiach was so angry about it. They added man-made laws on top of the Torah, making it nearly impossible to keep. These ordinances made the Torah burdensome for the average citizen. As a result, people were giving up on the Holy Torah altogether. The Torah was never designed by our Heavenly Father to be burdensome. In fact, as we have learned, the Torah is perfect. It is the perfect blueprint, if you will, or guide for our daily lives. So much so that Yeshua HaMashiach himself utilized the Holy Torah every day of his life, remaining perfect all the way to his final moments, fulfilling the Torah, becoming the perfect sacrifice, and abolishing and destroying the law of sin and death for all those who obey and follow his example. Now, here's another set of passages that have been badly misunderstood by men's traditions. Go ahead and turn your Bible to the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Colossians, chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Here the Bible reads, So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Mashiach, Messiah. How does Christian tradition interpret and understand these passages? They say, The day of rest and other requirements from the law of Moses, from the Torah, have been abolished and done away with by Christ. Therefore, no one should judge us regarding the keeping of the Jewish feasts or the eating of any foods. But what is the true understanding of these verses? The divine message according to the voice of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, that was heard by the prophets. Surprisingly, the complete opposite is true. Why? Because these passages were written for the people who had repented, abandoned their native traditions, and were now following the Holy Torah. For following the Holy Torah, these people would have been judged by their family, their friends, neighbors, for leaving behind their old pagan traditions and following the Torah. They were the minority, not the majority, very much like today. So they would have been judged by everyone around them for keeping the Sabbath, keeping Yahweh's seven holy feasts, keeping the covenants, and abiding by Yahweh's food law. Therefore, to put this into perspective, now, as followers of Yahshua HaMashiach and His Holy Torah, we should not let anyone judge us regarding our choice of food or in keeping of Yahweh's seven holy feasts instead of the feasts of the world which are pagan in origin and that the keeping of the Torah is but a shadow of what is to come. In other words, it is a shadow of what is to come in the millennium reign of Yahshua HaMashiach because major and more spectacular things are coming in the millennial reign of our Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach. But before this, all things must be restored. That is why you are listening to this audio right now. Baruch Hashem Yahweh, Sebaot. In the book of Ephesians, on chapter 2, verse 12, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, the Bible says that at that time you were without the Mashiach, the Messiah, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without Adonai in the world. If we were to understand these passages the way modern Christianity does, then Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 would not have been written in this way. It would have said something else. In the book of Zechariah, on chapter 14, verses 16 through 19, the Bible says that anyone who does not keep these festivals will be punished with plagues and famines. Now, let's go to the next verse that has been terribly misunderstood by the traditions of men. 
Go ahead and turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13. Here the Bible reads, A new covenant he has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. How does Christian tradition interpret and understand this verse? They say, See, the Old Testament, the Torah, the law, is obsolete. It is dead. It's been abolished. It's done away with. It is null and void. But what is the true understanding of this verse? The divine message according to the voice of the Ruach HaKodesh, of the Holy Spirit, that was heard by the Holy Prophets. The key to understanding Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13 is in understanding Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33. I repeat, the key to understanding Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13 is in understanding Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33, where it says, This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law, my Torah, in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Here on Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33, it is talking about the covenant that he will establish with the house of Israel at that time, in the future. Therefore, there is a new covenant that Yahshua HaMashiach will make with his people, the house of Israel, sometime in the near future. As we can easily see, it does not mention anyone else other than the house of Israel, his people. Therefore, we must become part of the children of Israel in order to receive these new covenants. That is why to become part of his people, the house of Israel, and receive his covenant in the millennium, we must first repent of our sins, follow Yahshua HaMashiach, following his perfect example according to the Holy Torah, and remain, remain in holiness in Kedushah, in order to find ourselves worthy of his covenants and promises in the future. Let's go to the next set of verses that have also been misunderstood. Turn your Bible to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 8 and 9. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 8 and 9. Here the Bible reads, But we know that the Torah, the law, is good if anyone uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the Torah, the law, is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless, the insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the ungodly and profane, for murderers, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. Now, how does the traditions of man interpret and understand these verses? They say, the law, the Torah, has no place in the life of a believer because we have now been justified by Jesus Christ. What is the true understanding of these verses? The divine message according to the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. The fact of being justified by Yahshua HaMashiach does not excuse us from the responsibilities of keeping the Holy Torah. Neither does it exclude us from receiving all the blessings and promises that come from keeping the Holy Torah in holiness and Kedushah. In the book of Romans chapter 2 verse 13, the Bible says, for not the hearers of the Torah are the just in the sight of Yahweh, but the doers of the Torah will be justified. The doers of the Torah. Let's go to the next verse that has also been badly misunderstood by Christian tradition. In the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 13. Galatians, chapter 3, verse 13. The Bible reads, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. How does tradition interpret and understand these verses? They say, It is not necessary for Christians to keep the law of the Torah, now that Christ nailed it to the cross for everyone who believes. Therefore, we shouldn't keep the Holy Torah. We should not keep the law. All we have to do is believe. But what is the true understanding of this verse? The divine message according to the voice of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, that was heard by the prophets. Yahshua HaMashiach took the curse that had resulted from our disobedience to the Holy Torah. But this doesn't mean that because he has taken the curse that resulted from our disobedience to the Torah, that we are free to disobey the Torah. If we want to truly understand Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, we must first understand Deuteronomy chapter 28. 
where it talks about the consequences and curses associated with the disobedience of the Holy Torah. Deuteronomy chapter 28 also talks about all the blessings that come from our obedience to the Holy Torah and all the promises and blessings that come from keeping the Torah, including the seven holy feasts, the Shabbat, the Sabbath, the covenants, etc., that are still alive today. Keep in mind that the Torah is in fact a curse. It is a curse. This is true, but only to those who don't keep it. It becomes a curse once you know about the Holy Torah and you don't do anything about it. You don't investigate. You don't, you don't look into it. You continue in the traditions of man. You undermine everything that was written in the, in the entire Bible and the context of the entire Bible. Those who keep the Holy Torah are blessed, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And those who don't keep it, it, in fact, becomes a curse. Another verse that has been misunderstood by traditions is in the book of Titus chapter 3 verse 9. Titus chapter 3 verse 9, where it says, But avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, the Torah, for they are unprofitable and useless. What does Christian tradition have to say about this? They say, you see, we are not to have any disputes over the Torah, the law, the law of Moses. The law has been abolished, therefore it is in vain and to no avail, because the Torah, the law, is dead. But what is the real understanding, the divine message that the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, was delivering to the Holy Prophets? Titus was a young man at that time, and Yahshua HaMashiach had made him head of his own congregation. When Yahshua did this, Rav Shaul Paul advised Titus that now that he was the head of his own congregation, he was to avoid any disputes and contentions about the Holy Torah, against the Torah that would have surely come his way, much like it is today. This concludes the first part of the study titled, The Misinterpretation of the Torah. Remember, all of the study material is always free of charge at www.joyandpeace.us. I would like to leave you with a verse from Kephas, from Peter, Kephas, in the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 16, where the Bible says, Kephas, Peter, Peter, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. Peter is mentioning the rest of the scriptures. He's referring to the Torah. It is very clear that Yahshua HaMashiach taught his disciples that his holy Torah would be twisted by mortal man for their own destruction. In fact, the holy prophet Isaiah, as we have seen before, prophesied about it in the book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20, again where it says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. On verse 24 it says, Because they have rejected the law, the Torah of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Thank you very much for listening to this audio. It will be a great blessing for you. Baruch Hashem Yahweh Sebaot. May Yahshua HaMashiach keep you and guide you and give you chokmah, wisdom, in the holy name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Omen ve Omen. Hallelujah.